Hi folks, welcome to an episode of Mr. Talanzia, episode number six we believe. We have some questions today. One is from Ivan and he says that he has some tectorums that have gradually lost the look and density of their trichomes, the white fuzz that's on the leaves. And he wants to know, is there a way to get the fuzz back up again? This is a Talanzia tectorum. And you can see how, how fuzzy it is. And the white fuzz are made up of the little trichomes. The trichomes reflect up to 70% of the light that comes to the leaf. So that's why it likes a brightly lit area. They also act as miniature paper towels. So the bicapillary action, when they get wet, they suck the water in very quickly and it goes down inside the leaves. So this one is pretty fuzzy. When it gets too wet for too long in too dark an area, the trichomes become more transparent and they get glued down to the leaf surface itself, which is green. And so the plant itself becomes more green. In my experience, there's not really a way to bring that back except for the plant to grow through that, to put it in better brightly lit conditions, uh, less frequent watering, more air to help it dry out more quickly, and then over time the plant will grow and new leaves will grow and they'll be fuzzy. So this is a nice one. Here's a little volunteer that landed, looks like stricta. A seed landed on a leaf and started growing on its own and it's rooted onto the leaf. And on the back side here, you can see there's quite a development of root structure here. The roots are all brown, which means they're all dead. They can be cut off or they can be left attached to the plant as the inflorescence. This is an old inflorescence. It's normally a, a rose colored with little blue flowers, but this one flowered quite a while ago and so it can be cut off like the roots can be cut off or it can be left on and the roots can be left on whichever way you would like to have it. If the root tips are yellow, it means that they're alive. You can cut them off too, you know, but it means they're alive and it means that the plant's pretty happy when it has the live yellow tips on the roots. Okay, question number two, do junches grow large and do you have any old ones? I don't know who this was from. This is from Air Plants Decor on YouTube. And this person says, I have two that bloomed a year ago, but they don't seem to grow. It looks healthy otherwise. Well, that's the first step, is to have it look good, especially with Junsi, which is not so easy to grow. Junsi is very slow growing. We've grown them from seeds, and in 20 years, they're only this big. So those that you see that are coming, that are big and beautiful, come out of nature down in Central America, and uh, and that's and they're already big. They don't they don't really grow them like that, you know. So that's uh, that's why they're big. Yes, yours will grow bigger, but it might take a number of years, at least two or three, maybe more, before it actually starts getting larger. If you have Junsia in the house, oftentimes that's a problem because when the base of the plant gets wet and there's not a lot of air to dry it out, it rots very quickly, more quickly than most of the other species. So when you see a plant, a Talanzia, that has real thin leaves, that's an indication that it grows in an area in nature that gets a lot of air, a lot of air. Tectorum is like that. Junsia is like that. Philofolia, Fuxi, Many species that have very thin leaves grow in areas outside that get a lot of air movement so they dry out quickly in nature. So if you have one inside and there's not a lot of air and it gets wet and it doesn't dry out quickly, that's what happens when they, when they rot, that's the reason why. So that's, that's that one. Oh, and I wanted to mention also, she asked if, uh, you know, if you have any older ones. Well, here's an older one, how's this? this is, a clump of Junsia that started from one plant a number of years ago. Uh, this one on the bottom has a spent inflorescence and you can see that there are about four or five seed pods on it. The green things here in each seed pod will have about 20 or 30 seeds in there. It may take a year or so for that seed pod to turn brown and open. They call it dehiss in botanical jargon. 
and inside are the seeds and uh, they all have the fuzzy cottony attachment on them so they can float around and catch on something and grow. And if you ever want to do that, go right ahead and uh, make sure you're young when you start, you know? Because <laughs> if you're older like me, you're not going to be there when they get big. So anyway, this is a Juncea that uh, started from one plant a number of years ago. There are probably 30 plants in this clump. Dorian has a question that says, I was told by someone that you should break a Dorati, meaning snap it in the middle and, uh, and it'll force the Dorati to pup on both sides, almost like a survival tool. Uh, supposedly this process is used to increase your stock. Uh, I don't know about that. I, uh, if you're a grower and you have one plant, I wouldn't break it in half to see what happens unless you're ready to go buy another one in case that doesn't work. If you do that, one side for sure should offset. I'm not sure that both will, maybe they will. If you want to produce more quickly, more plants, um, you can drill the, the meristematic tissue, the area at the top of the plant where all the leaves grow out. If you kill that, then oftentimes, most of the time, almost all the time, the plant will then throw off a number of offsets. But Dorati does not normally have many offsets. It might have one, two, three, maybe four if you're lucky. Unlike some species, it'll produce a dozen or two dozen offsets. Dorati does not produce so many. So, you know, just, if it was me, I would grow the one plant. And if you wanted to get more of them, I would buy more little ones and grow those out. That's safer, but, um, you know, it's up to you. Okay, last topic today is about soil for Tillandsias. Yes, Tillandsias grow without dirt. They're completely epiphytic. However, that being said, you can take the plants and if you put them in a fast draining, a very well-drained mix, you could use pea gravel, you could use orchid bark, pumice, perlite, anything like that, and you put the plant in there. And you don't want it to go down deep inside because if you do and it gets wet and it stays wet for a few days, it can rot. The meristematic tissue at the base of the plant uh, will will rot, so you don't want to do that. So rather have it more at the top, uh, you could take some shish kebab skewers or bamboo stakes or something like that, pieces of stiff wire, and stick those into the media so that it holds the plant in place. And that way the plant will start to develop roots. And in that kind of a microclimate where you have this humidity from being having moisture, uh, you will develop an extensive root system. And that extensive root system will uptake nutrients and moisture and the plant will therefore grow bigger faster so if that's your goal if you want to grow the biggest plant possible the fastest then you can take most of them maybe not all and you can put them in the soil mix like I mentioned in the way that I mentioned and you should be able to grow it bigger faster with a well-developed root system normally in nature these plants use their roots as hold fast roots which is the term used to describe the plants that they root onto whatever they're on. They're completely, the roots completely exposed to the air and therefore they are usually dry and dead and they don't uptake moisture and nutrients. They just kind of grow and die as they grow. Uh, like an ivy, if you picture ivy roots crawling across the surface of something, that's what the Tillandsias generally do. So you can, you can just grow them as an epiphyte or you can do what I said before if you want to grow a more extensive root system and you have lots of bench space to, uh, to grow them in pots. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. And, you know, next time, <laughs> next time we'll do episode number seven. Ask your questions. Send them in to uh, www.rainforestflora.com or... And I hate to say this, but I'm not exactly sure all the hashtag way of doing things, but maybe that's a good way to do it, too. I'm sure that it's out there somewhere. And I need to learn that. I know that. But, uh, you know, you can't do everything in life, right? Okay. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.
Rainforest Flora Incorporated.